Hey there, Alice here. Um, I had a couple of questions a while back about how I create those uh, watercolor backgrounds on my project. Uh, so I thought I would make a little video. I'm so happy to be back in video making again uh, and share you some of uh, my techniques on watercolor backgrounds. Here are some of the tools I uh, turn to when making a watercolor background. I usually start with a generous layer of gesso uh, to protect my cardstock. And then I have some color media like spray inks. And I'll probably be using some gelados too today. Those are usually my go-to. Uh, items I don't uh, mostly don't turn to paints these are the things I grab for first and then I have a mini mister with clear water in it and a watercolor brush um, actually to just uh, spread the color around and uh, make the colors uh, bleed into each other and things like that so that's what I start with I have my craft surface here to protect my uh, cutting mat. This will be the picture I'll be working with. Uh, and I know um, it will go somewhere here on my layout so I made a little marks to be sure that I um, spread my gesso all over that surface. I apply some gesso to the page and then just with my card I work it around. too much here so I'll take some off. You can put on a nice generous layer uh, or just a small tiny layer just to um, protect your cardstock from all the moist we'll be using in a minute. <coughs> the more generous, generous your layer of uh, gesso will be the more texture you can add to it, of course. Today I will choose for just a rather thin layer. The reason I use this gesso is really to just protect my cardstock. Um, I'll be playing around with a lot of water and it helps uh, my cardstock not to soak up too much of it not to tear, not to warp too much. That's my intention with this. So, gesso is applied. You can put this jar aside. And now we'll have to dry this layer um, completely before we can add any color or anything. You can see my page is a little warped already, um, but really I don't mind. I know it will flatten out. Uh, it will get worse once I add a lot of water and uh, color to it, and it will get more flattened out again uh, once my page is done and it sits nicely and snuck into my album. So uh, I don't worry too much about it. 
So going back to my picture, this is what I will be adding. Um, and I would like to get some watercolor um, here at the bottom left corner and I guess some here too. So I think I'll go for that tealy, teal blue kind of color uh, here at the bottom and perhaps um, more a bit of a grayish color up there. First I'm going to add some water to my page. Um, the areas that I want to color in. Uh, because once you apply the color to your um, to your paper and it is already wet, um, your color will spread out immediately, which was, will give a much better um, effect from the first moment you spread it around. So I added some of the gesso and I will be working it around the page with my finger. Adding a spray of mist and then I will be adding a lot of water again. If I have something that I don't like, I usually just take a paper towel and take it back off again. As long as your color is wet, that's no problem at all um, because of the gesso layer on, underneath. So I had uh, used the icebox uh, sprinkler from October afternoon and I thought that was a bit too much of the color so I just took some off with my paper towel and I sprayed it again, working it around with my finger. And you can see I'm really just using uh, different kinds of colors and let them spread out. If I want more, I just add more. If I want less, I just take a little bit off. That's how easy it is. I like using my fingers to spread it all around, but you also can use that uh, water brush I showed you earlier. You see me tilting my page and making the water run around. It makes it look a bit more natural, as if the water just really uh, came together and made those those little effects and those those uh, bubbly wavy patterns you'll be seeing uh, at the end as if the water did that all by himself so I think I'm going to uh, dry this piece first and see how it turns out and if I like it I might be adding some more or leave it as it is and move to the next one moving the water around with my heat tool a bit too as you can see the center area has been dry already so I move the color around a bit again
And as you can see, you can just play around with your water and your color until you have the effects you really like and you are aiming for. If you don't like it, you just take it off with a damp cloth or something and remove it and just start all over again. That's the beauty of the gesso underneath that it's allowing you to play around just until you have the end result you really like. Gonna leave that for a second there. As you can see I have some small splatters here from spraying which I rather don't want to see there so I'm taking a tiny bit of water onto my uh, paper towel here and I'm just going to try to remove it a bit as long as it is, it on, it is on the gesso that's no problem at all for example this one here as a splatter that's not on the gesso so I can't remove that anymore but I don't mind so now I'm going to add some color on the top there and I think I'm going to go for a grayer kind of color so I know this is uh, a very dark one, but I'm hoping it will not turn out too brown once dried and uh, diluted and everything. So I aim for a bit of a darker color. If it's too dark for my liking, I'll just take some off again. Not dark enough, I'll just add a bit. Kind of like the effect it is getting here. Um, so I'm just going to tilt my page a bit so the color stays a bit in the corner up here. And I'm going to zap with my tool again with my heat tool. When certain areas are drying and others are still a bit wet, that's when you see those darker circles appearing and you get a more spotty, uneven kind of look, but that's kind of how I like it. Um, if you don't want it too dark, don't let those puddles of uh, darker water pile up there. Just spread it around again or take it off if that's not what you're uh, aiming for. So I'm going to take that last drop off. Because that's going to be under my uh, picture anyway, so I don't need that. 
going to look what's the effect mm -hmm. kind of liking it uh, perhaps I should add a bit more blue around the side here so that's what I'm going to do I'm going to spray some water on this corner again and add some color not too much just to give it some light bluish uh, feel to it you see as I spray over water and start working on this part again is that the darker lines over here are uh, slightly disappearing again too so uh, it is messy but still it is under control and that's exactly how I like it I can make a mess I can have that uh, watercolor effect but still I can take it all off if I don't like it I can direct it into the areas where I want it or don't want it so it's very manageable and that's thanks to the gesso underneath of course So I'm going to let this dry by itself. You see there's some warping but I will flatten out uh, later on when we're working on it. I'm uh, going to let this dry completely and then I'll be back to finish up the layout.